Are y'all ready? Here it is. Everyone and welcome to AC23, the radio show slash podcast of the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge. My name is Chancellor Zero Skidmore. My producer is Jeremy Porcine, and the world will never be the same. Unlike any of our previous episodes, we are taping this remotely because of a stay-at-home order issued by Governor John Bell Edwards in an attempt to curb the spreading of the coronavirus known as COVID-19. So before I get into a conversation with this week's guest, I'd like to say that uh, it is my sincere wish that all of our listeners, listeners, fellow Louisianians and fellow humans of the world, keep ourselves as safe as possible and look out for each other by reserving our handshakes and hugs for a later date. Maybe hand out some hug coupons that can be cashed in uh, this summer. Um, so today's guest is no stranger to the show. She's the executive director of the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge. She's my boss, she's my mentor, and she's my friend. Renee Chatelain, welcome to AC23. So great to be here, Zero. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome, awesome. Um, and so uh, we got some much needed information for our artists, uh, people in the arts community, arts lovers, arts organizers, arts administrators. And so um, I think uh, I, I'm, I'm just really glad that I'm in a position to be able to, um, to, to share some of these resources with, uh, you know, so many of my my fellow artists who I share a kinship with. And also, you know, if you're an artist for long enough, you look around and, and all of your greatest friends are artists. And so, um, you know, they become your extended family. And, and, and I would also say your kids become artists quite often. And so, um, so for me, it's really, really important being able to get this information out because, you know, for me, all of that is, is accurate. You know, my, my daughter's a, a singer. Um, and um, a lot of my best friends are artists of, of various genres and disciplines. So, uh, to be able to share these resources, I, I'm honored, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to be uh, of service in that way. Oh, it's so great, and you know, I'm so glad that you are championing championing artists in this way because, um, you know, artists need to be celebrated, and they are a vital resource, and that's what we're pushing at the Arts Council because they speak to who we are, and um, art in a time of crisis is the source for healing, for calm, um, for, for really channeling a lot of our emotions. And um, it it's makes us human. And so when we're talking about vital resources in our community, certainly arts are at the top of our list. Yes, I agree on 100%. So um, as far as the Arts Council of Greater Baton Rouge, uh, what, is, what is the day-to-day -day work looking like now with the impact of this crisis? Well, you know, for us, um, and, and we're a small team, but um, a really dedicated team, it was pretty seamless because we already had an emergency plan in place. And that came about because of a program that we started um, in 2016 after the flood. And um, it's called Creative Relief. And it is a program that is ongoing for us. It's both emergency planning, but it's also emergency response. And so we were able to pull, pull out our plan and with a little improvisation that artists do so well, <laughs> um, we um, are working remotely, but we're trying to reach out to our community in a variety of ways. And I'm, I'm glad that you have me on the show today so we can talk about some of those things. But at the top of the list for creative relief is um, resources. Yeah. How can we help artists? And our immediate concern um, was for our arts organizations and for our individual artists, particularly who make their living um, as, as gig economists, right? Or, or working in the gig economy, right? They're yeah. part of that, that system. And, um, you know, I think as we, as we move along, uh, small business loans may be something that may be accessible to some of those people, but the backlog of, of SBA loan applications might be four or five months from now. So how do we get people to pay their rent April 1st? Yeah. How do we get these um, and, and, and keep those dollars going to people who make our lives better every other day and continue to do so even in a crisis because of who they are. And so um, our creative relief website um, at artsbr.org, we have a mm -hmm. cre creative relief page and you can click on the front page. It says click here. You click on the word here. Um, you can go to that page and it's divided up into funding resources 
um, and then divide it up further by um, visual artists or musicians, puppeteers, right? It, they have different categories. Um, but then under that, and I think, and we can talk a little bit more about it um, as we move on, but under that are also non-monetary resources, including mental health resources, which we think is really, really important to share. Yeah. And, um, and we want everybody to take care of their mental health, their physical health, as well as their financial health. Mm -hmm. That's very important, uh, especially for us uh, artist types who have a tendency to be a little more uh, uh, passionate, <laughs> if, if that's an appropriate word. Yes. Um, and, and, and just to point out, like the Arts Council just revamped the entire website uh, with the impact of this crisis, which was, which was all done through remote conversations. Uh, and a lot of, not a lot of artists have been able to, I mean, not a lot of arts organizations have been able to turn on a dime uh, the way that the Arts Council has been able to kind of uh, adjust. And I, and I think that's really, for me, like I find myself saying that word adjust a lot. Like we, it's, it's really about, you know, uh, adjusting to this, this, this new situation. And it's, there's that initial feeling of helplessness that I, I've had some conversations with some artists and I rem that, that first week was definitely kind of this feeling of helplessness. And, uh, and now um, uh, I've talked to quite a few artists like uh, uh, Ellen Ogden and Kiana Linnell and, and, and now they're just getting into, getting into making art and, and um, you know, doing what artists do. So um, we talked about creative relief a little bit and how it was born out of these, uh, these hurricane and flood events. And now we have this completely new aspect that creative relief has to respond to. Are, are there, uh, um, are you getting a lot of information from other um, uh, organizations about uh, how to respond to this particular uh, uh, crisis as creative relief? Yeah, you know, this is a, this is a completely different animal in that it is not localized. So usually if there is a, a weather event or a human event um, that causes an emergency, um, other people from around other parts of the world who have not been affected by that emergency usually pour in some of the resources and help out. This, this tends to be worldwide. Everyone's experiencing it the same way. And, um, you know, we have, to sort, we have to sort of take a cue from our actor friends who operate on yes and, <laughs> yeah. and take that improvisation cue and and do what's best but at the same time be collaborators um, as improv artists are I'm always I'm referencing them because <laughs> so much of what improv artists do whether it's jazz music whether it's um, theater uh, dance is that they they say yes and that's their mantra and also they are always reaching out to collaborate it is it is a listen and respond sort of um, art form in all those different genres yeah. um, that we take as a cue for what we do administratively. And so what we're doing is connecting to our national partners um, uh, with Surf Plus, who's for visual artists and craft artists, with um, the NEA um, and with Americans for the Arts, the National Guild for Community Arts Education. We're talking to all those folks and yeah. we're on conference calls to see what resources they have and what they are employing so that we can do the same thing here locally or connect to them and make those programs stronger. Um, we're sharing everything we can every day on social media, on our website and on platforms that people have access to. And so we hope that that's helpful. But one of the really, really important things, Zero, that um, I know you have been very involved with and we want to stress is for people to take the field survey. Yes. Um, this, this survey is one that was, um, that is being distributed across the entire state of Louisiana. And if you think about it, that we're both in a sprint and a marathon. We're in a sprint in the situation of, we need to get funding to our, our gig workers and to um, people who need um, money pretty quickly when their, their whole industry has, has just completely stopped and come to a halt. So we've got that sprint um, need. But we also have the marathon need, which I think will play more into, as we move along, arts organizations. Because how does fundraising look in the future? How, how do they pay their staffs? And how do they keep themselves going 
um, first of all, because a lot of their events were canceled, but then as we look in the long term, how will funding and, and how will the stock market affect philanthropy? You know, those kinds of things. And so we want to make sure that we're addressing both. Um, and so the only way for us to do that and know exactly what the needs are of our community is to hear from our community. Yes. So we want to make sure that people take that survey and um, we will use it locally based on, you know, where you're coming from when you, when you, uh, when you go ahead and take that survey. But we also send all that information up to DC, to the National Endowment for the Arts, to our Americans for the Arts partners who are lobbying for money. Um, so it is really, really important that everybody take that survey. Yeah, it's kind of a stand up and be counted kind of situation. And um, I think it's important to, to, to mention too, like we want artists to, to fill out the survey, but we also want arts organizations and administrators to fill out the survey as well. That's right, anybody connected to the art field, even if you, like, if you have a business, um, if you have a graphic design firm, you should fill out that survey. I mean, anybody in the creative field, anybody in the arts field should be filling that out. Um, and I'm going to say along the lines of that, and this is, uh, may seem a little more remote, but it's super important, complete the census. Take part in the census. I know we have a lot of online platforms to do that, but the more people that we have in the creative field working who complete that census, the more impact we can have when we're going to lobby for more funds at the federal and state level. So take the survey, take the census. But And the survey, I took the survey myself. Uh, I think it, I, I, I finished it so quickly, but I think it was maybe 20 questions. And a lot of them are, are kind of multiple choice, right? You, you, there's a certain range of, uh, you, you, you click on A, B, C, or D in some of those questions. Um, and yeah, it's super quick. I think it took me about three minutes, maybe four. Yes. Exactly right. So it doesn't take a lot of time. And, you know, we all have some time on our hands at home now. <laughs> right. You can take it any time of the day or night, which is also key because we're all sitting around doing our own schedules. So so do take the time to do, do that and um, and spread the word about it as well. Yes, definitely. Definitely. So um, there are I think I, I, I got a little pushback. I was talking to a, a friend of mine who's a, a professional musician. All he does is play trombone and go on tour with, with different acts. And, um, you know, he was kind of lamenting about all the information that some of these foundations are asking for. And, and, and you know, I was kind of like, well, what else do you have to do today? You know? It's, uh, <laughs> and, and, and I think also is that you could get some money from some foundation and then some more money from another foundation. So it's, and then once you, once you compiled those, um, I guess uh, 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 tax forms, maybe, or or uh, or receipts, or or pay stubs, or whatever they're asking for. Once you compile that stuff one time, you don't have to compile it again. Now you just have to, you know, have it saved and and share it out. Um, and so uh, again, I I think uh, a lot of artists are not used to maybe. I, I think for writers, you know, writers have to we have to we get into this habit of submitting for. Uh, uh, poetry journals and things like that. And so we're used to this kind of submit, submit, submit um, kind of uh, routine. But I think a lot of artists aren't, aren't familiar with it. And so I think if any artists are having trouble, um, you know, there are other artists they could reach out to who've done it uh, and, and, and get some, some help, some feedback. Uh, I, I think it's just important that artists reach out to other artists and we lean on each other. Yeah, and you know what, even... There are people in the community who are not necessarily working artists, but who have raised their hand to volunteer to help people with forms. And so if you um, are having trouble with the form or you don't understand a question um, on whatever application you're working on, um, if you reach out to the Arts Council, we can put you in touch with a volunteer who can help you complete those forms. They, they're not here to do the form for you, but they're definitely here to help you yeah. work on those so that you are successful in your application. And if there are any listeners out there who want to volunteer for the Arts Council at this time, there are definitely things that you can do. And so this is one of those things. If you want to help um, musicians and artists and uh, theater personnel, and, and let me give a shout out to, to all the technical support staff. Those people who work um, backstage, who are lighting designers, sound engineers, these relief sources are for you too. 
So please make sure that you um, spread the word about that as well. You are part of the arts family and um, these yes. funders recognize that. And, and I, I think it's important to note that they can't list every single, there's so many jobs within the arts. And so they, they can't list every single job title. Uh, and, right. and, and so I think when, when, when people go to these, uh, click on these links that are on our website and, and go to these sites to, to try to find uh, some, re, some financial relief or whatever, uh, I think it's important to note that, yeah, if you work in the arts, you work in the arts. And just, just fill out the form, you know? Uh, yeah. And if you, you know, if people have questions, you certainly can email us at info at artsbr.org and we will respond to you and your questions. So you don't have to remember a specific name of the person on the staff. Yeah. We, we check those daily and we'll get back to you. So that that's info at artsbr.org. If you have some questions about that. Awesome. Um, so we have some other community programs that are going on. Uh, and I, I know that it's a, a great thing about the Arts Council is that the Arts Council is here to kind of shine a spotlight on other organizations that are that are doing arts uh, based work. So um, could you tell us about some of the other community programs that are going on right now? Sure. Well, you know, it's so great to see artists in our community. Um, they're so gracious and giving and they want to share their work. And so we have um, also ways that even if you are not a professional artist, yeah. that you can um, spread your creative product uh, uh, along through social media and with us. One of those is Walk the Chalk, which was started by Facebook Moms. And we love this program where you can just create your own uh, masterpiece on the sidewalk. And we've seen a lot of those posts and your kids, it's a great activity for kids, mm -hmm. but we say kids of all ages. So don't feel barred by the fact if you want to explore your chalk, chalk art um, <laughs> skills, you don't have an age cut off. Um, but we will post those and we will continue to, to promote that program. It's so great. Another one, um, the Baton Rouge Gallery has the uh, flat curve gallery exhibition and they're asking for submissions from anybody. They're yeah. gonna put it, it's gonna be a virtual gallery um, and that's really exciting. So look for that and we'll be promoting that. We have um, our Art Flow, which is a Louisiana State Juried Art Exhibition. We have a People's Choice Award. It's a monetary award. All you have to do is look through the virtual gallery and vote for your favorite piece. And we're gonna announce that um, later in the month of April but we really want people to participate. Um, these artists really want you to see their work. So that's a really fun thing to do is you're scrolling through the multitude of maybe a little bit meaningless social media. You could scroll yeah. through some really lovely, fantastic art by Louisiana artists and all that work is for sale. So you might even go shopping in the, in the time <laughs> that you're in the gallery. Yes. Um, we're we're going to continue to, um, to celebrate all of the activities that are going on with arts, um, with artists throughout the community. I know that we're working on a virtual tip jar program so that bands can perform and all the money that goes in that virtual tip jar will go to that band. Um, so we really are excited about launching that program. And um, if you've got a program out there that you're doing and you want the Arts Council to promote it, please, send us an email, shout out to us on any of our platforms and, and we will promote it for you. We want it to be, um, we will promote things that are free, community um, oriented, that um, celebrate or support financially or otherwise artists in our community. So send us um, information. And, and I, I would also add, if, if you just are making art and just want to share a pic or a, a short video, we, we have our Instagram page, we have our Facebook page, like uh, we want to hear from you guys. I think right now, um, you know, uh, Ellen Ogden, who's a, a painter in town, uh, talked to her the other day and she was going around to different storefronts offering to, uh, to paint positive messages on storefronts. And it was kind of a pay what you can deal or, or, or just accept it as, you know, volunteer work. But I thought that was really cool. Um, um, the, the stay at home order kicked in, uh, yesterday evening. And so, um, we're, she can't do that now, but, uh, a lot, uh, of what she done, what, what she has done is on her, her Instagram page. And so 
share that stuff with us, y'all. Uh, we'd love to see it. It, it lifts spirits. Uh, this is this is what the arts is for to get us through times like this. I think. Right. Well, and you know, I'll challenge you and your and your poet friends. Maybe there's <laughs> kind of maybe there's some kind of online haiku fun program we could be doing. So let's think about that and and throw that out there. And I know that I saw that people are doing um, dance classes or um, theater programs online. I know Theater Baton Rouge is working on something. So you know. We want those kinds of activities. I'll also, I should say that um, for those people who are, you know, struggling, and I know you have kids, sometimes the struggle is real with um, uh, online school, oh, that yeah. we, have a, we have a myriad of arts education resources online on our education page. Those are lesson plans and different things that you can do um, with your kids, as, and they are... Um, they are uh, enriching the core lesson plans that are required by these kids. So uh, are required for students in, in our parish and in the 11 parishes we serve. So take a look at those arts education programs that are on our website. And I think that's very important to note um, that, you know, um, reading uh, and math, you know, quite often we, we, we make sure our kids, you know, while they're out of school are, are continuing to read and continuing to, to keep their math skills intact. But also, yes, they need these uh, arts, arts outlets as well as arts instruction, you know, and, and, and you could do that at any age, right? Um, right. Well, um, is there anything else, Renee, before we go that we want to make sure um, that people remember, I, I guess we could go back and again, remind people about the survey. I think the survey is super important. Survey is really important. Know that we're here for you. We're open to resources. We, we're launching um, this week, our first um, artist talks, which are Zoom talks. They're meant to be conversational. We, we noted the value as a staff of seeing each other's faces every morning. Yeah. Um, it just, it just, did our hearts good to Coffee see mugs in hand. that's right <laughs> so we want um we want to be able to extend that conversation and be neighborly to our arts community so look for those artist talks sometimes they'll be um topic based sometimes they won't so yeah. um it's just a way to connect and we encourage people to do the same awesome well renee thank you so much for coming on ac23 our uh our first uh video uh as well as our rec audio recorded show and uh once this is all over, maybe we can continue this. But uh, I want to thank you so much for taking your time uh, to, to come on the show today. Oh, thank you, Zira. Thanks for everything you do. Awesome, awesome. I'll talk to you later. All right. Bye. Some think I'm dangerous. Diamond ain't no fool. You might think I'm wrong. Diamond, I'm exciting. And the way she's looking at me.